Rocky Mountain Permaculture presents Permabits. Deep in the forest wilderness of western Montana, Rocky Mountain Permaculture explores Paul Wheaton's farm laboratory. Welcome to Wheaton Laboratories. Let's get to work. I want everybody to go home with something rather than with nothing. Like, if, rather than a winner-take-all scenario, it would be awesome if all six ants won something. And so, like, I'm thinking if we make sure that one of these plots wins and all the other ones um, fulfill the minimum challenge requirements, then I'm willing to split this up into sixths, like sixth of an acre, and then each ant would have a sixth of an acre of deep roots as long as they fulfilled the minimum challenge requirements. This is my this is my theory of an alliance. Jesse's not on board though, so I don't know. It might be doomed already. <laughs> um, but there's at least six um, paddocks or, or, or nations within this within Ava, and this is this one right here is Tejas. Um, and so I've got this fence that I got from Tim. It's calf panels, and I'm, I'm I'm making it taller so that the deer and turkeys can't get in. And I've got all these bones here, and I'm going to build this sweet like bone sculpture that's going to wrap around the edge of the fence and be really creepy. <laughs> And also awesome. And also um, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, this is my garden that I started. And this is all just handcrafted hoogles. I didn't use the excavator for any of this stuff. I got some stuff growing in it. I'm psyched. Could use more mulch at some point. Maybe it'll rain. That'd be good. It's just, you know, some keyholes. Kind of funky, cattywampus shape. It's going to get taller here. This kind of a fence along these, the south and east border, and then along the north and west border, it's going to be kind of firm. Uh, and there's going to be a concrete called the Gulf of Tejas. <laughs> the Gulf of Tejas. <laughs> So this rock wall is actually not a rock wall, it's just a pile of rocks. And it's all going to eventually, all these rocks are going to be moved. And I'm going to use them um, on my shelter project and maybe on some other things I've got going on. Um, we, will, we will get to that. Oh god, we'll patience! To, well, actually, patience! I guess we could get to that right now if we wanted to climb over and go check it out. That'll work. I'm so excited. Of I'm so excited. Which were, which were on the labs when I got here. They were already debarked, sitting out dry underneath some tarps, so they were starting to rot. And I was like, Paul, can I use those to build a fire? And he's like, sure. So I was like, yes. There goes like two months of hard labor in like an instant of just dragging it over here. So that's totally unfair for the next dance to get here. Because they actually have to debark shit. It's going to suck. But I'll help them, so it'll be good. But um, So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these like seven footers. But I have already cut seven foot, and they'll go along the side every couple feet or so. I'll have a sill plate along the bottom running the 20 foot length. This is a 10 foot, or no, a 12 foot span, and I've got like four feet of overhang off of each side. And so, yeah, like I was saying, seven footers every couple feet or so, and then I'll have seven footers all the way along the roof, butted right up against each other. And then in between, on the gaps here, I'm thinking of putting like rocks at least part of the way up. I don't think I could go the whole seven foot without it being kind of unstable. Maybe backing it, this is still kind of a design in progress, maybe backing it with like some milled lumber so that I have little like shelves, sort of, still figuring that out. But I've been focusing on everything but the shelter at the moment, lately, so it's... <laughs> Just because it's been so dry. It's been really dry, but I should be, I should be, I should be making this happen one day. I'm just, we'll, I'll get to it before winter. I'm already like most of the way there. Kind of. <laughs> I've got a ridge beam done. Yeah, that's important. Um, good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff right there. Yeah. yeah. So in here, like I say, this is Louis Sylvania. I've got a little. This is like my most wooded 
nation on Ava. And, and kind of in there is kind of a little picnic grove, nice and shady. I like to go in there and eat lunch um, in the middle of the day because it's nice and, nice and cool. Maybe I'll put some like a, like a little stone patio in there and make it so I have nice cool stones to sit down or lay on. Um, so, so this is Lewis Lane, this road that y'all all walked in on. And right here, this is Intshire. Like, you know, like the ints, like the tree folk, but like hobbits, like the Shire, like both of those, like coexisting in a symbiosis in this nation, right around here, where I'm living, because I'm a hobbit. Where's chaos again, dude? Um, I want to go fertilize. Fertilize? Where's that? Hey, don't what? mess with chaos. Where's chaos? is that way. All right, I'll find it. South. <laughs> um, oh, and so that one by the road there, where I've got that hoogle that's kind of half-assed, that is um, Anarcadia. Um, like anarchy, but also Arcadia. Uh, and so then this nice big south-facing slope here, this is the, the nicest place, this is like why I picked this spot. South-facing slope, giant trees. And this whole south-facing slope here I'm calling Avalon. This is awesome, it's got this Arthurian legend like any island, a fortunate island, or like island of apples or something. So basically, food springs forth from the ground where no plow has touched. It's totally it's awesome. um, so I'm going to do a lot of observation. I was thinking about putting the structure there, and then, but I changed my mind, and I'm just, I just want to observe this for a few years. It's ideal. I mean, it's out there. Um, this is like kind of an unnamed area. Yeah, I don't know if y'all, y'all probably got the tour already from Paul about, and he probably talked about this fence already. Uh, he calls it the junk pole fence. I feel like that's like a little bit offensive. Brian calls it the peckerwood fence. <laughs> I kind of like that better, but but I don't know. I haven't really come up with a name for it. And I built a lot of this compared to anyone else in the world, as far as I know. So I'm reserving naming rights on it, but I haven't named it yet. But I'm open to suggestions. Right now, it's the Hamelot fence, this particular section of it. So. But yeah. Like yeah, that. I mean these just those are just loose stuck in there. So th these this is the only part these four uprights, you know, the posts and the horizontals there. That's all screwed together. But then all of the rest of this, this is all loose. You just pull this right out. You can need a spear. It goes right in. Now hopefully this will keep in a pot belly pig. Maybe. <coughs> but I've got eight foot tall along the edge here, along my, my borders with the outside world, but then towards the interior of Ava, this is only going to be about four foot. I'm going to like cut this perfect. off so it's kind of wavy, and the lowest troughs are going to be four foot. Oh, and I'm going to have a flag for each of the nations, and so like the one for Hamelot is going to be like pink, white, and blue. There's going to be like a pink pig on a white throne in a blue background. I think that would represent Hamelot. It'd be very royal. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Pretty much the tour. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Awesome. Woo! I did. Yeah. You know yeah. Mainly just the enthusiasm. Oh, uh, enthusiasm. Well, now we can follow him on Hermes. <laughs> Homesteading and permaculture all the time.